This video is on Open Web Application Security Project. Open Web Application Security Project is a nonprofit online community that comes together to improve software security. They produce freely available articles, methodology, documentations, technologies, and tools in the field of web application security. They're mostly known for their top 10 research project. Top 10 Research Project offers rankings of and remediation advice for the top 10 most serious web application security dangers. The report is founded on an agreement between security experts around the globe. The risks are graded according to the severity of the vulnerabilities, the frequency of isolated security defects, and the degree of their possible impacts. Open Web Application Security Project manages the top 10 list and has been doing so since 2003, and they update the list every two to three years. Their goal is to provide web application security experts and developers with an understanding into the most common security risks so that they can use the findings of the report as part of their security practices. This can help limit the presence of such known risks within their web applications. This is the top 10. At the top, we got broken access control. If authentication and access restriction are not properly implemented, it's easy for attackers to take whatever they want. With broken access control flaws, unauthenticated and unauthorized users may have access to sensitive files and systems, and even user privilege settings. Configuration errors and insecure access control practices are hard to detect as automated process cannot always test for them. Pen testing can detect missing authentication, but other methods must be used to determine configuration problems. Weak access controls and issues with credential management are preventable with secure coding practices, as well as preventative measures like locking down admin accounts and controls and using multi-factor authentication. Next, we have cryptographic failures. This is when cryptographic systems in place are non-existent or are weak. Example would be an application automatically decrypting credit card information during transit, like when it is being retrieved, allowing SQL injection flaw to retrieve credit card numbers in clear text. Some might even use HTTP protocol instead of HTTPS, showing everything in clear text. There are a lot of things to look at from what protocols it uses to what algorithms are being utilized, from IVs to crypto key management and so on. You must ensure data are properly classified, stored, and only encrypt what is necessary and ensure everything are up to date from protocols to key management and disable cache for sensitive data and much more. Next, we have injection. This occurs when attackers exploit insecure code to insert their own code into a program. Program is usually unable to determine the code is their own or not and attackers are able to use injection attacks to access secure areas and confidential information as though they are trusted users. Examples are SQL, LDAP, and CRLF injections. Next, we have insecure design. This is a broad category representing different weaknesses. It focuses on risks related to design and architectural flaws. Good development lifecycle and using library of secure designs and using threat modeling and so on are good practices to ensure you prevent insecure design. Next, we have security misconfiguration. Just like misconfigured access control, more general security configuration errors are huge risks that give attackers quick, easy access to sensitive data and site areas. Dynamic testing can help you discover misconfigured security in your application. Next, we have vulnerable and outdated components. No matter how secure your own code is, attackers can exploit APIs, dependencies, and other third-party components if they are not themselves secure. Static code analysis tools can help developers find insecure components in their code before they publish an application. Next, we have identification and authentication failures. Because of incorrectly implemented authentication and session management calls, attackers may be able to easily assume legitimate user identities. Multi-factor authentication is one way to mitigate broken authentication. Next, we have software and data integrity failures. Software and data integrity failures relate to code and infrastructure that does not protect against integrity violations. Many applications now include auto-update, where updates are downloaded without sufficient integrity verification and applied to the previously trusted application. Attackers can potentially upload their own updates to be distributed and run on all installations. 
You have to use digital signatures and ensure you're using trusted repositories that's vetted. Ensure there aren't any components with known vulnerabilities and apply a review process. Next, we have security logging and monitoring failures. Failing to log errors or attacks and poor monitoring practices can introduce a human element to security risks. Threat actors count on lack of monitoring and slower remediation times so that they can carry out their attacks before you have the time to react. To prevent issues with insufficient logging and monitoring, make sure that all login failures, access control failures, and server-side input validation failures are logged with contacts so that you can identify suspicious activity. Pen testing is a great way to find areas of your application with insufficient logging as well. Establishing effective monitoring practice is also essential. Next, we have server-side request forgery. Server-side request forgery flaws occur whenever a web application is fetching a remote resource without validating the user-supplied URL. It allows an attacker to coerce the application to send crafted requests to an unexpected destination even when protected by a firewall, VPN, or another type of network access control list. Developers can prevent this by implementing controls on network and applications, like enforcing deny on firewall on the network layer and sanitizing and validating client-supplied input data on application layer or disabling HTTP redirections. Oh, man.